Got it, got it. 2.50, we're at 2.50, it's ticking up. I love to see it. All right, let's get started because we do have a huge amount to get through today. For those of you just joining you now, uh, I'll reintroduce myself. I am uh, Jess Butcher. I'm uh, the CMO of Sweat. And today we are running our very first AMA. So thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, we're really excited to introduce ourselves, to share more about the project. Today is a very special introductory AMA. Uh, I'm joined here by Oleg, our co-founder. And we want to set a bit of context for you all, uh, who we are, what we're doing, and most importantly, why we're doing it, uh, and why we think we are the, uh, the team to be reckoned with when it comes to this new movement of, of Move to Earn, uh, and why we're so excited. And, and firstly, I guess we wanted to thank you all as well. Uh, we, we simply can't believe uh, the excitement that has happened over the last couple of weeks since we announced our, uh, our appearance on the scene. And we're so grateful to everybody that's got so actively involved in the community here. Uh, it's been tremendous for us to see. We're learning a lot from you. We're listening and we are here to share so much and so many exciting things that are coming up in our roadmap. Uh, and as we as we all race together towards our token generation event. Uh, so today I'll be um, interviewing Oleg a little bit about uh, the reasons behind uh, sweat, um, what we've been doing in the years up until now, and why now for Sweat the Token. Um, and then we're going to go into a load of the questions that have been sent in from the communities. Uh, so again, thank you for those, some brilliant questions, and we'll try and tackle as many of them as we possibly can. I've tried to curate and group them so it makes sense. Uh, but um, towards the, in the second half of the session, we'll then be opening up the stage. So if we haven't answered your questions, do do keep them front of mind, put your hand up, and our team will be bringing people up uh, to ask your questions directly of Oleg. Uh, so Oleg, firstly, I'm gonna hand over to you. Please introduce yourself uh, and tell us a little bit more about you. Hey guys, uh, real pleasure being here. Um, and uh, I wanted to thank some of you because I see already in the audience some names that I recognize from the Discord server and also from our Telegram group. Um, you know, kind of those that have been asking questions, participating and helping others, you know, separate massive, massive thank you to uh, you, not just for participating, but also helping other members to understand what we're doing. And seeing you here does suggest that, you know, kind of you probably going to take this information disseminated further and this is actually making me you know really really excited when the news from us uh, are not only heard from our own mouths but actually can be passed by other members of uh, the community really really excited to uh, to be here and answer all the questions that you might have start with a little bit of data so you can see. So it's only just over two weeks since we announced Sweat. Uh, and already, you know, our traction is uh, pretty phenomenal, as I hope you've all seen. But just from the community activity alone, obviously, we, we've got a number of you in the audience here, but we've, we've managed to achieve a, a membership of 21,000 uh, Discord members, um, 74,000 Twitter followers. We've got 7,000 in our Telegram group. Uh, and this was all from a standing start. So all these channels were zero um, when we started, when we when we announced that um, just just only two weeks ago at Paris Blockchain Week. That was a really exciting event for us. Um, we were on stage with our partners Nia to talk about why we were partnering with them and uh, what we're building. And that has in itself generated a snowball effect of interest from people within the crypto media, from influencers and from key people of influence. So that's really exciting. There were just conversations happening everywhere and so many interesting potential partnerships uh, and opportunities that we'll be able to announce to you in the coming weeks. The most important number of all, of course, is uh, the number of wallets uh, that have been created, which as of uh, the last hour stood at 1,472,102. That is already out of date, by the way. I took that um, about an hour ago. Uh, but I think, we think, that this uh, represents the biggest on-ramp um, in Web3 history. 
Uh, it's hard to qualify that, of course, um, but uh, we certainly never heard of anything that has that has scaled in that way. Um, and we're very, very excited to hopefully be the conduit of a huge on-ramping of Web 2 users uh, into, into Web 3. Uh, and of course, you'll be part of that journey with us. Um, the only thing I'll say before I dive into some questions with Oleg is do hang around until the end of the AMA. There are going to be some surprises and opportunities uh, for you to potentially uh, win some treats. So do hang around um, and, um, and, and stay close to your keyboards. So if you're out and about walking, which I hope you are, you should all be walking whilst you're listening to this AMA, AMA and, uh, and getting your step count out. Uh, keep your phone to hand towards the end. Um, so let's dive in, Oleg. Um, I think where sweat is concerned, it's really important to understand that we are not a suddenly appearing crypto out of nowhere. Um, you know, there, there is a business here. Please tell us a little bit more about what that business is, when it started, why it started, most importantly, and what your mission has been from day one. Great question, Jess. Um, this has been a fairly long journey. Um, some of you have been with us for, um, for a number of years. Um, and you know that we started in 2015, 2016. And as our name suggests, we were thinking about being on blockchain and being crypto, you know, already, you know, back to six, seven years. Um, why did we think that? Uh, well, because we wanted to make the world more physically active and we figured out that the best way to do it is basically to change your relationship with physical activity from, you know, kind of an unnecessary, you know, uh, kind of calorie burn into something that, you know, not just makes you healthier, but is also making you wealthier. And we couldn't come up with anything better than effectively have a sort of financial reward. But who needs the sort of fiat? And how do you actually make that work? And we came up with the concept of Sweatcoin. We spent better part of 2015 um, kind of trying to figure out how to make it work on blockchain. Um, those of you that remember those years, there was only one blockchain back then, Bitcoin blockchain. And we met with Vitalik uh, in 2015, Anton, uh, my co-founder, um, who is also here on stage? Was it end of 2015 or early 2016 when we met with Vitalik in uh, in, in London? Yeah, I think it was early 2016 actually. Uh, yeah. January or February. He walks like crazy. He walks really fast. Yeah, no, he's uh, you know, kind of, it it was very very difficult to get, uh, to keep up with him. We had a walking meeting, as our brand would suggest. And uh, we've decided that, okay, you know, kind of Ethereum, that was just a research grade project back then, was a fantastic opportunity, but it would set us back by about six to nine months of additional development and a few hundred grand of additional development budget. And we thought, hmm, we're going to launch centralized. And we did. And by early 2017, we said thank you for that, you know, kind of important decision because we really, really started gaining a lot of traction, uh, more than a million users, and we started processing several hundred transactions per second at peak. Those of you that are sort of, uh, understand technicalities, uh, that is, you know, probably about 20 to 25x the theoretical throughput that Ethereum can allow. So if we were to build an Ethereum, we would have been dead. Ethereum probably would have been dead. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the space would be completely different. So we looked at blockchain two times more in 2018 and in 2019, and we just couldn't find technology or protocol fast enough to support us. Come 2021, and all of a sudden, there was a flood of great projects coming in. There was Nia, there was Solana, there was Avalanche, there was Polygon. And we spent a better part of a year looking at more than a dozen different technologies. We tested technology. We spoke to with founding teams. We really did a lot of due diligence because the scale of our business, as Jess already mentioned, we're just you know, kind of shy of 70 million users. We've just expanded globally. So it's a very, very big decision for us. And we've chosen Near 
Um, well, you know, we can probably talk about reasons uh, um, in another question. Um, yeah, we're very excited. As you could hear that, you know, kind of from this, it's not like this is a brand new thing for us. This is finally doing what we wanted to do all these years. So this is finally, you know, kind of making Sweatcoin to be the business that we envisioned it to be in 2015. With a big mission, right? We want to get the world moving more. I love your two analogies, which I'm going to, I'm going to make you talk about now. The first being Wally and also the second mm. related to orgasms. You have to, you have to share both. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, I'll, I'll start with, uh, with orgasm and then Wally. I think that, you know, better placed like this chronologically. Um, it was really exciting because at the very beginning of the project, um, you know, we had basically nothing. PowerPoint uh, and idea were running around and a lot of people laughed at us. They're like, you want to do what? You want to pay people to walk? This is a charity. This is not a business. And we realized that, you know, we kind of needed to be sexy. You know, kind of there's got to be a really, really sexy pitch. And it came out from a very unexpected place. We, you know, kind of me and Anton, we're kind of thinking uh, about the problem that we were solving. And the problem that we were solving is why can't we move more? You know, kind of, we all want to be a bit more physically active. And it's funny that it actually is applicable to 100% of us. Those that run ultra marathons, they want to train more. Those of us that are extremely lazy sitting in front of tea with a bottle of beer, we actually secretly want to be fitter. And, uh, you know, if 100% of people experience the problem, then typically, if you dig deep enough, there is, you know, there is a very simple explanation and there should be a simple solution. So once we spend a lot of time thinking about the problem, we realize that the reason why we cannot move as far uh, as much as we want to is because nature doesn't want you to move. Nature builds you to survive, not to spend those precious calories. And... Um, you know, nature is so serious about it that actually gave us that behavioral feature that helped us to survive. Right now, it's more of a behavioral bug. And the feature is called present bias. We're focused on right here, right now. We don't run unless there is a mammoth on the horizon and we're hungry, or there is saber-toothed tiger on the horizon and we're about to become his or her meal. So otherwise, we sit in front of the fire and preserve those calories. We continue doing this right now. So unless there is an extreme amount of pleasure or there is a danger, we don't move. How do we change that? Thankfully, nature paints the, you know, kind of gave us an answer. How do we know? Well, because there is another behavior that is really badly affected by present bias. And this behavior is procreation. So, you know, basically nature had to give us an orgasm in order for us not to screw that up. So that's called instant gratification. Unfortunately, nature failed to give us an orgasm for physical activity, and therefore we're failing on that front. So we kind of figured, hmm, you know, that sounds like really a very, very cool page, orgasm for exercise. And that actually landed us in the first accelerator program in London, which was run by London Sport. It landed us on the, final, uh, on the finals of that program, which was held in big IMAX theater in uh, uh, London, and it made the whole audience laugh as well. So we kind of employed it, and it really got us quite a lot of press coverage because people were kind of going, ooh, what the hell is this? You know, well, why? And that sort of generated excitement and it generated attention and helped us to gain quite a lot of traction. So that's orgasm for exercise, the Wally. Uh, Wally was an original kind of inspiration because, you know, my kids, when we were starting this business, were, you know, kind of uh, three and five, and they were totally obsessed with that uh, Disney movie. If you haven't watched it, watch it. You know, the forecast for humanity in that movie is dire. We're going to get fat. We're going to be not able to walk around on our own feet. We're going to need to have scooters. And if you fall, you need a robot to lift you up and put you back on a scooter. It's pretty, it's pretty awful. So after watching it 20 or 30 times, those that, you know, kind of have kids know 
if kids like it, you know, kind of, it's not like watching once, you know, they would want to watch it on repeat time and time again. That was an inspiration because it does make you feel like, you know, kind of, is it really our future? Why are these guys sort of thinking that we're going to end up there? And it's very true. It makes you start, you know, it makes you think about your choices. It makes you think how much time we spend sitting. It makes you think what choices we make about our food. It makes you think about those kids that are sitting in front of this TV because the choices that you make will influence the world that they live in. And actually making the world more physically active kind of turned into this sort of line that you can even find on my LinkedIn profile if you find me there uh, that says, I think, like preventing wally blobby future one step at a time or something like that. That was a sort of motive. That was a desire and a drive. Uh, because I definitely don't want us to end up in uh, um, in that situation. Love it. Thank you. I, those are my two favorite stories that you tell of the journey and two of the stories that certainly encouraged me to join the team. Um, and I want us to talk just a little bit about the team behind Sweatcoin. We've touched upon the approaching 70 million users. What about this team that you've built that you know are, are behind the scenes that have been building out this incredible product and, and creating this behavioral nudge science for movement? What does that look like? Well, there are nearly 100 of us, um, or maybe 100 um, this week, and you know we've been building this uh, this team over the last so six to uh, seven years. An absolutely incredible bunch of people because, you know, uh, and I've been to a lot of businesses uh, before. I don't think I've ever been in an environment that is so mission driven. Um, I think that you, it, it, it is incredible how often we would have a conversation. How does this, what we do, make the world more physically active? And it is an extremely relevant thing for, you know, kind of for everybody um, in the in the organization. Because if they don't believe in this mission, you know, we just sort of scale up with great ambitions and quite a lot of momentum. But to be honest, you know, these these people would stick out like uh, sore thumb. It's not like we are filled by people who are running ultra marathons and are you know, um, sort of crazy fit. We have those, but generally we don't have people that don't care about, you know, kind of what choices they make in life, you know, kind of how much sort of sport they do and how fit and healthy uh, they are. In terms of functions, in terms of kind of focus of our organization, we're a very, very kind of product-driven and user-driven uh, organization because our mission is very much uh, to make the world more physically active. We're really focusing on people and users, and we're tracking the you know levels of physical activity, and are very keen on seeing positive change uh, in that. And that can be only achieved through an amazing product that works amazingly well all around the world. So we pay a lot of attention to users, to product UX user interface and the way technology works. We are now starting to uh, look into a lot more uh, kind of in the area of marketing. And, you know, we're really excited that uh, uh, Jess uh, joined us. And the third huge area is value that you receive for your physical activity. So we have a massive team that is doing an amazing job making that marketplace in Sweatcoin app populated with pretty amazing uh, stuff. So, yeah. Great. Yeah. I mean, what I would add, I think we've got obviously Sweatcoin, the app. We'll come on to talk about the specific building blocks uh, within the organization, how Sweat differs from Sweatcoin. But ultimately, I think the title of the Discord channel says everything. You know, this organization is about getting the world to move more. And it's about creating an economy around movement. This this sweat economy. I think one of the one of the questions that's been thrown at me most since I joined the company was sort of how how can you apply a value to health? You know, we kind of all know intuitively that our health is valuable. It's valuable to ourselves, to our physical uh, health, to our mental health, but it's also valuable to our employers, 
to our communities, to our economies, to our health providers, because by being healthier, we actually contribute to the global purse by not costing the state and our economies money. So it's that kind of the recycling of that money and, and, and giving the people that look after their health the opportunity to, to share in the value that they create in their economies, right? Yeah, no, uh, you're absolutely right. I think that this is an area that I didn't sort of cover yet. In our initial conversations with investors, with um, you know, future employees, with partners, one thing that we've noticed very quickly were two things. One is when you say your movement has value, everyone nods, everyone agrees that it is valuable. However, if you ask a follow-on question, so how valuable it is, everyone just gets confused because, you know, we have this notion of abstract value, but it cannot be expressed in any concrete term. And that's really, really exciting because, you know, there's basically very, very little else in the world that everyone agrees is valuable, but there is no kind of, you know, market. There is no value exchange that exists around it. So we kind of thought, wow, this is pretty incredible. We can actually create an economy of movement because your doctor wants you to be active, your insurer wants you to be active, your country wants you to be active, your employer wants you to be active, and there's quite a lot of economic exchange that can be built around it. And in order for this economic exchange to work, you need a unit of currency. You need a unit that measures the value of physical activity. And we thought, hang on a second, you know, we definitely want this to be sweat or back then it was sweat coin, but right now it's sweat, the token, that is effectively a currency backed by the value of your physical activity. And the value of it is going to be market, you know, sort of perception that it puts into the value of human activity. So that's, uh, um, uh, that, that, that's one thing. And the other thing that we heard from very early days is really funny, actually, you know, we had periodically heard, oh, sweat coin, that's a bit sort of stinky and, you know, sort of armpits, smells bad. Would you consider changing your name? And that was a signal for us that, that there's absolutely nothing to discuss beyond that. Because, you know, can, if you don't see sweat as an evidence of effort, as an evidence of physical activity, as something that demonstrates that you're actually doing something productive and positive, then there's absolutely nothing that can come out of that conversation. This person is not going to join us as a team. This person is not going to give us money. This person is not going to become our partner. Love so it. we love the name because it polarizes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, we've been thinking about and we've been hearing from our community about names that people that are into this movement want to call themselves. And, you know, we'd love to hear actually from, from you guys within the community chat, you know, what you think you should be called if you're into this and if you're into this behavior are you are you sweaters what are you come on let's let's hear from the community because we don't want to dictate we'd love to know you know what 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 label you would apply to people that get this mission and, and who want to be a part of it okay i'm conscious we've been quite macro for a while we've talked about the philosophy behind the business the movement that we're looking to create uh, and of course the credentials of um the team behind this uh, that has been working on this mission for some time and with this uh, huge amount of success. Let's get into the weeds now and um, start to look at some of the questions that have come in from our community uh, with thanks again to all of those who took the time to submit them. There were a number, as you might imagine, of quite logistical how it works questions. So perhaps we'll start with those. Can you elaborate on this concept of sort of proof of movement, I guess, and how the sweat coin step counting actually works? Great question, very perceptive. From very early days, we realized that if we are going to turn sort of movement into value, we need to have a very robust system to verify it. And, you know, it was extremely tempting to do what a lot of other projects in this space are doing, which is, yeah, you know, you know if telephone recognizes this as steps, we're just gonna take it as face value. You know, as soon as you start giving value for steps, you know, people put their phones on the dogs, you know, they, they put them on top of dishwashers, you know, um, you know, hang them on metronomes. Uh, I mean, you name it, uh, you know, we, we, we've tested it. There is a 
cool website called um, unfitbits.com that teaches you into you know that teaches you how you can trick your phone or your wearable into uh, believing that you're physically active. We basically had to deal with all of those use cases, and we built really really sophisticated model that verifies your movement. And there are a lot of questions in the community. Why do I never get exactly one Swiss coin for 1,000 steps? Yeah, because of that, because of that model. Uh, because, you know, believe it or not, your phone does detect 1,000 steps, but some of them will be bumps and shakes. They're, you know, they would be just not a uh, step. And some genuine steps might actually be discarded by the model. Very, very few, uh, because, you know, it's very, very important for us not to let any Thing through that is not a genuine movement because otherwise there will be a lot of scammers, otherwise there will be a lot of gaming, and otherwise sweat is not going to be valuable. So for us, it is a very very big thing. We've put you know sort of seven years and a very very serious effort. We have a team of data scientists that are basically you know kind of day and night looking into this model and how to improve it. Great. Um, and, and related to that, we had some questions come in about uh, wearables and how it could co potentially connect or does connect with any of those. And also about its potential to engage in different types of sports for minting um, sweat coin and sweat in the future, cycling, skiing, swimming. Um, can you elaborate on that for us? Love it. Great question. Um, so on wearables, we already work on Apple Watch. Uh, unfortunately, we're not yet working on other wearables, even though we looked at a number of them. Uh, and the basic reason for us not to support, for example, Garmin, that I absolutely love as a wearable uh, watch, is because it's virtually impossible to secure the data transmission between the watch and your phone, and therefore that would be just a security risk. So. You know, somebody could impersonate and, you know, kind of appear to be a Garmin watch and claim that they're making a lot of steps when, you know, there is absolutely uh, no evidence uh, uh, to that. So, you know, kind of as wearables are becoming a bit more aware of this use case and securing things, we'll be supporting uh, more. The future, as just alluded, you know, we're really, really excited to... Um, look at an opportunity in the future to be able to create sweat, the token, from other physical activities. However, the way we look at it is that you know, we need teams that are passionate about tracking those physical activities and being able to verify them. What they will be able to do in the future is to run a movement validator on our network that would enable them to submit the physical activity data and issue sweat on the back of that. And you know, can, that means that we're gonna be able to cover more of your daily activity, not just uh, walking and running that we do right now, but swimming, high intensity training, CrossFit, cycling, um, et cetera, et cetera. If you one of those businesses, we'd be delighted to hear from you and uh, let's have a conversation. Great. Thank you. Um, moving on to where we are now, I guess in the, in the roadmap and in the in the in the in the process and the journey towards sweat. Hopefully, most people will be aware of most of these answers, given that they've hopefully been in the community for a while. But obviously, we are pre TGE. Talk us through where where we are and what's going to happen on TGE and what that means for those uh, people that have the Sweatcoin app, uh, and I guess what what they're working towards right now. <laughs> Thanks, Jess. Great question. Um, so TGE is going to happen in summer. Um, I know that people would love to have a more precise date. Uh, unfortunately, we're not ready to announce it yet. Um, keep coming to this uh, AMAs. We're going to be uh, releasing more precise information when we, you know, kind of when we're ready. Um, what's going to happen at TGE, however, is very clear to us. The TGE is going to be a moment at which we're going to take a snapshot of all balances of all users in Sweatcoin system. And those that have opted in and created their wallets, 
will receive a matching one-to-one amount of sweat into their crypto wallet without losing their sweat coins. This is one in a once in a lifetime opportunity to exchange your movement effectively for sweat at such an attractive uh, um, exchange rate between steps and sweat. As from that very second, every next sweat is going to be generated only by your movement. The first 5,000 steps per day for those users that opted in is going to go through our Oracle into smart contract and will issue you with sweat at constantly increasing minting difficulty. So every next sweat is going to take more steps to mint. Why are we doing this? Well, twofold. First is our mission is to make you more physically active. And that means that we want you to walk more earlier. And in this scenario, walking in the morning is better deal than walking in the evening. Walking today is better deal than walking tomorrow or on the weekend. So we want you to walk earlier rather than later. The second thing, what it does, it allows us to have an ever declining um, inflation of the uh, monetary mass. So in perpetuity, the you know while the um, the total supply is not capped, the inflation year on year is going to be asymptotic to zero. So it's going to be practically flat. However, you will continue being rewarded for your physical activity five years from now, 10 years from now, 50 years from now, even 100 years from now. So the most obvious thing for you to do right now is basically accumulate as many sweet coins as you can. Walk, invite friends, you know, do those daily bonuses and daily boosts. If you don't know what they are, ask in the community. I'm sure you're going to get the uh, help. We have users that are, even though on free levels, on free uh, subscriptions, the cap is 10 sweat coins. You can actually double, quadruple, or even, you know, kind of do it 10 times over if you maximize, uh, you know, kind of other activities in the, uh, in the application. So come to TGE, which is going to happen in summer with the highest possible balance is a very, very, very good strategy. Yeah, I'm loving watching a lot of the people within the community advising other people within the community about how to up their set count. You know, they're talking about get out and do your do your meetings whilst you're walking around, uh, get your premium, get your referrals going. It seems like a lot of people are learning very, very quickly how to up their number of sweat coins in preparation for TGE and sharing sharing the love and sharing the knowledge, which is which is great for us to see. Uh, like mini fitness instructors within the community effectively helping each other. Um, let's let's come on and talk a little bit about rewards. Um, you know, we, we we know the crypto space. You know, there's lots of um, mechanics and initiatives and things out there that you know we want to potentially look to embrace to you know keep the community excited and to give them lots of things to look forward to. How much can you share about what's in the pipeline reward wise? Uh, what's being what's being thought about and uh, how much can you reveal at this stage? I uh, can't reveal specifics yet, but the good news is that we already have a number of partners that are ready to move with us, uh, despite the fact that we're still two to three months away from, uh, uh, from TGE. What we're definitely going to have are um, uh, NFTs and airdrops and log drops from partners who are very, very interested in our amazing community to attract them to uh, to their projects. Another thing that we're definitely going to have is staking. So you're going to be able to take your sweat. I mean, imagine you walk, you earn crypto, and then you put it into a savings account or, you know, kind of using Web3 terminology, you stake it and you earn interest on it. I mean, pretty amazing, phenomenal, um, you know, kind of, a lot of people that we attract into Web3 that come with us into sort of creating this crypto wallet have told us time and time again that they fear two things. One is crazy difficult user experience where, you know, you need to 
Remember the seed phrase. Make sure that you write it down somewhere. If God forbid you lose it, then you you know kind of you, you, you lose all the money in the wallet. And the second is that they fear that they first need to pay and quite a lot of money, and then they starting to learn how the whole thing works. And they're really fearing this because no day passes without them reading about Ronin Bridge being drained of six hundred fifty million, wormhole being you know um, um, uh, losing three hundred million, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And people fear that it's going to be them. Now we give them an opportunity to literally walk into crypto and use an amazingly simple user experience that already helped nearly 1.5 million people create wallets, crypto wallets. You know, we did our analysis. You know that, you know, kind of we've created 1 million wallets in 11 days. This is by far the fastest Web3 project getting to 1 million users ever. The second fastest, I think, was something like 65 days. So we're talking about 6x faster to get to 1 million uh, users. Absolutely amazing and a testament to a great product work that the team is doing. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, let's go on to talk about some tokenomics questions. Is there a light paper? Yes, there is. It just hasn't been released yet. We've just gone through final sort of one over, and the first draft is going to be released for sure next week. So, you know, close of play Friday, we'll definitely have it available on our website and available to our community. Cool. I just noticed there was a question actually that said, um, are there any... Any events planned which may give sweat airdrops to the community members? All I'll say is stay tuned to the end of this AMA and uh, you might find out a little bit more about that. Um, on the tokenomics side, um, some questions just under, try, seeking to understand uh, where will the initial liquidity come from? Great question. Um, the initial liquidity is going to come from you, the community. We are you know, kind of, we are running the business for already quite a long time, and we've got millions and millions of users. And we understand that if we do right by you, the project is going to be a phenomenal success. So the, the initial liquidity is going to be coming from you community. There will be very, very few tokens unlocked on the uh, foundation side. The team founders investors are all going to be locked for a very lengthy period of time. Sorry, I was on mute. I was disappointed by that particular answer, but hey, um, <laughs> when um, do we have plans? Walk about... more, Jess, walk more. <laughs> walk more, I know, I've got it, I'm walking. Not right now, but in most of my meetings I am. Um, do we have plans to have other blockchain network support other than near planned? Very good question. Unfortunately, I cannot reveal any details, but we are being approached right now, especially given our traction uh, by a number of tier one protocols that are very keen to build partnerships with us. And right before this call or this AMA, we had a sort of internal session, um, you know, trying to kind of figure out how this can all work architecturally. Uh, at this moment, you know, in public, all I can say is watch this space. We're definitely going to be focusing on near first and foremost for one very simple reason, because they are by far the best technologically um, out there. We were able to get more than 1,000 transactions per second on uh, their main net. And we absolutely love the team that we're working with. So, you know, this is, you know, kind of undoubtedly going to be the backbone of our operation. However, there are other chains that we will find a way to work with in order to bring you some rewards and some opportunities to join projects that you would be interested in joining. And if they're not available on near, 
then it might be a kind of a, a reason to partner with some other protocols and some other chains. Got it. Um, okay, I'm conscious of time and I, I we would like to bring people up from the audience. So um, I will do so in uh, three or four minutes. So if you do have questions, uh, raise your hand and our team will be looking to bring you up shortly. A couple of quick fire, um, uh, quite straightforward questions uh, that are quite specific that I wanted to fire at you. Um, I understand that some countries like USA are able to use the Sweatcoin app but can't participate in TGE. What happens to their Sweatcoins? What is the sort of what are some of the geographical restrictions and why? And how soon till a market like the US, for example, can create wallets? Yeah, I mean, first of all, um, you know, it, it's important to mention why this is happening. It's a sort of regulatory framework uh, that is uh, uh, that exists in the U.S. that prevents us from being able to uh, to do our airdrop as soon as the situation changes, and we are in constant sort of conversations with uh, uh, with lawyers uh, on this. We will include the United States as soon as it is uh, uh, kind of humanly um, humanly possible. Um, I, you know, kind of, I'm hearing quite a lot of noises. There is, you know, there is always a sort of positive momentum that I'm hearing coming from the United States. So I'm actually not losing hope that we would be able to include the United States even in uh, uh, TGE. But bear with us, uh, you know, there is quite a lot of work that needs to be done on, uh, on this front. There are a few other markets that are excluded as well. Uh, all of that is for uh, kind of regulatory legal, uh, legal reasons, unfortunately. Got it. Um, another question I thought was quite interesting. Uh, premium membership is allowed only via fiat now. Can the premium membership be be brought using Sweat once it's launched? <laughs> uh, I, I am not in position to either confirm or deny these uh, rumors uh, um, at the moment. But I, I, I like your train of thought. Well, we, we like to tackle the hard questions as well as the easy ones. Uh, will there be an age limit for using Sweat? Not at the moment, no. Um, but there is an age limit to uh, to using our um, our app. So you know, kind of, I, I I definitely know that my kids until recently couldn't you know kind of could install uh, Sweatcoin. Got it. Okay. And then there was um, a few questions around collaborations and I guess marketing, which I guess are partly for me. Uh, although you may have some thoughts on this as well. What marketing is planned by the team? Are there any collaborations planned? Do you plan to make an agreement with companies such as health and sports to receive payment with Sweatcoin? This encourages people to walk and make the Sweatcoin more valuable. Uh, thank you. I mean, I'll, I'll take that and then please add to it, Oleg, if you have any other thoughts. Yes, absolutely. I think what to us is most exciting about um, what Sweat is all about is that we are we have true ramifications in the real world. You know, that is how the token is ultimately minted. And, you know, most traditional brands live in the real world uh, and not just within Discord servers. And we will absolutely be looking to identify really great partners that we can work with to get this message out there, who can help us give additional rewards to our members with whom we can tell great stories and uh, and get much more visible in the real world, whether that's in pedestrianized street areas, at core events around the world, at festivals, um, along uh, you know staircases. I want us to take over every staircase in the world, which I think is just the perfect uh, example of you know how to move more. You don't stand on an up-moving escalator; you walk on it. Uh, so partnerships is going to be um, a big part of our, our marketing initiatives, and there will also be lots of creative and fun ways that we anticipate being able to get our users competing against each other, uh, working together on uh, on contests, on opportunities to win more sweat and everything that I guess supports that overarching mission of getting the world moving more, we want to be encouraging and finding the right partners to do that. So yes, there are going to be a lot of exciting initiatives and interactive opportunities for members of this community to get involved with social campaigns. Um, um, you know, we've, we've, Thank you, by the way, to many in the community for some fabulous memes uh, that have been shared in our meme channel. We've really been enjoying those, particularly the when is summer 
meme, um, which uh, we're enjoying. Obviously, there'll be more information about TGE coming, coming in due course. But we want this community and this movement to feel as interactive and fun as possible. And we want to create as many opportunities for you to take advantage of other partners within the space. Uh, so watch this space because we'll be announcing them to our community first and foremost. Um, and you'll, you'll have an opportunity to get involved. Uh, anything you'd add to that, Oleg? Just a little bit. Um... You know, kind of given the fact that we are not sort of flash in the pan and we're doing crypto for crypto's sake, but we're actually bringing millions of users with us into Web3, we know that the best marketing that we can possibly do is to you and through you. Two thirds of all users that we have right now came through word of mouth. So, you know, one thing that you can be absolutely certain that the first investment in terms of focus and time is going to be the product and value for you before we actually do some advertising and sort of spend money on external partnerships. We believe that, you know, if you are happy and you feel that, you know, kind of, you know, we're doing right by you, that's going to make it all brilliant and it's going to be win-win for, uh, for everybody. It doesn't mean that this is the only thing that we're going to do, but, you know, if over the last six years, two thirds of people here came because they heard of us from a friend, you know, we will definitely continue doing that. Great stuff. All right, it's time to hear from some people in the audience. Um, I don't know if you've got questions ready. I can see a few hands up down below. I'll hand over to my colleagues to, to bring you up to the stage one by one. If you could keep yourself on mute when you come up until I call you by name, and then please feel free to unmute yourself and uh, ask, ask us a question. I'll wait to see who's coming up. Okay, first, uh, thank you. Welcome to the stage, Crip Tony. Um, do you have a question for us? Feel free to unmute. Muted. Still muted. Creep Tony. Oh, he's gone. Oh. He's gone. He got. He got uh, stage stage fright up here. Uh, Wimps, do feel free to bring up a couple more if there are any. I can see fourteen hands up. Oh, I'm going to struggle to pronounce this one, but welcome to the stage, Vinta Gevich. Vinta, v all right, <laughs> what's your question? Um, okay, um, hi, Jace. Um, hi, Oleg. Hello. Hi. Um, I'm Victor from Nigeria. So you're probably Vintage Vic then? Yeah, Vintage Vic, that's, that's correct. <laughs> that makes more <laughs> sense. What's, your, what's yeah. your question for you, Vic? Oh, um, okay. Uh, I know that it's going to be um, ever uh, decreasing inflation to to add value. I just wanted to know if there's going to be uh, like a burning mechanism also to add value to the uh, to sweat. Um, it's a bit of a tricky one. Um, if you're following the, you know, what's going on in the market regulatory legal frameworks. Um, then you would know that it's actually, uh, it is becoming a big issue for projects uh, uh, to burn tokens. What I can tell you though, is that unlike most other projects um, in the space, we be being health and fitness and focusing on your physical activity and making you more physically active over time, we have this yeah. wonderful thing that's called inactivity fee. So if somebody decides to run a couple of marathons and then living off the proceeds from that, that's actually not going to be the case. If you sort of put your boots up and sort of keep back and don't move, there will be small and continuous sort of fees uh, that uh, uh, will be, you know, kind of levied on you. And we're not doing it to, you know, kind of to drain your account. No, we're doing it to make sure that loss aversion is driving you to make sure that you put those boots on and you continue being uh, physically active. The 
collateral damage or rather sort of side effect of that is that there will be a effectively a sync mechanism for tokens to go into a uh, some form of reserve. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you very much for your question. Who's up next? Hi, hello, can you hear me? Hello, yes. welcome to the stage. What's your question? Hi, I would like to know uh, what would be the, the first price in USD that the Swiss are going to have? <laughs> you know, have you ever got an answer to this question from other projects? Uh, is that a question? Yes, it is a question because, you know, OTG is in uh, two to three months and uh, there are a lot of variables that goes into uh, this decision, what is going to be the launch price. If you look into, um, into projects that have done it, none of them ever publicized uh, the you know kind of the, the the price too early, and typically it is a last moment uh, decision. So I understand your interest. However, this is something that we are going to keep our uh, up our sleeve uh, uh, very much until the you know sort of the the crossing the finishing line. So how would you decide? Like, are you monitoring? some aspects to, to decide it or absolutely there... no it's a you know we, we we do have a you know and as you know you know there was already 100 people uh, on the team we do have a very I would say sophisticated way of looking at it both from inside uh, also looking at the projects that have already launched over a period of time. We have an amazing set of uh, partners um, um, that, you know, kind of, that have very good grasp of market realities that are investors, market makers, um, and, you know, we're getting a lot of help and advice on, uh, uh, kinda on this question. And one thing we know is we're for sure not going to be putting this uh, this information out uh, early. Okay, and will it be uh, possible to exchange right away with other near uh, currency or with near cryptocurrency, or how do you plan? How do you plan to release the token? I'm not entirely certain if it is going to be on day one. This functionality is going to be available, but it's definitely in our uh, roadmap. If you look at the roadmap that was uh, um, already published, this is sort of an integration of uh, DEX functionality, um, and we definitely uh, plan to have it. When exactly it's going to be launched, um, I am not going to be able to, uh, to tell you right now. Okay, uh, thank you. Your project is amazing and good luck. Thanks. Thank you very much. Be active, you know, keep collecting those sweat coins. Thank you. Thank you so much for your question. Okay, next up, I think we had M. Fon Vincent. Uh, do you want to unmic and ask your question? You're on mute if you are trying to talk. Okay, maybe we'll come back to you. Bagkio, did you have a question for us? Thank you guys for, oh, hello? Oh, you can hear me now. Yes. We yeah. can. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you guys for hosting this AMA, which has been very informative and I'm really looking forward to the future of Sweatcoin. Uh, I'm unsure if this question has been asked already, however, uh, I was uh, thinking how Sweatcoin is planning to differentiate themselves uh, from other platforms who also have an idea or a concept of walking to earn in the future. Very good question. Um, 
how do we differentiate? I think you know, can, it, we're, we're completely different project. Um, first of all, we are an original move to earn a project out there. Uh, we did launch, we did start in 2015 when majority of, uh, uh, of project hadn't even been sort of conceived. And we've managed to build a very formidable business through Web2 because blockchain wasn't ready for us. I guess this is, you know, not, you know, I'm not entirely certain who the challenger here is, but, you know, kind of, we definitely don't feel like we have an awful lot uh, to prove. How do we differentiate? I think probably the biggest differentiation is we are for a billion people. We are for those people that do not have 10, 12 soul to spend on pay to play uh, mechanics. We are for people that, you know, have a smartphone and are interested in walking into crypto, learning, understanding how it works, adopting its vocabulary, its values and learning its technology and you know, kind of making crypto irreversible and sort of part of the future that right now is adopted only by few sort of tens of uh, uh, billions of people. So we're definitely mass market. We are not cost prohibitive and we are designed with a completely different thing in mind. Our kind of underlying purpose and the reason is to make the world physically active and in order to accomplish that, we need to make sure that sweat is valuable. The other projects appear to be coming from a kind of slightly different philosophy. And, you know, they are maximizing, I guess, the intake of people that can afford to play and, you know, kind of making money for them. I don't know, you know, kind of, I can hardly see uh, a world where, you know, 1 billion people is going to be able to spend $1,000 in order to, uh, to join a game. Thank for your question. I think that was a great question. Um, next up, 723. Did you have a question for us? Yeah, hi, good morning. Um, yeah. So my question is just, uh, just to touch base on like the previous question. I get the whole point of um, trying to like with the goal of making the world like work more. See, same time, it's not really going to be more just a social cost, right? There's going to be some form of like corporate rate. So I guess my question is: You're is breaking up. Could you could, could could you get the microphone closer to your mouth, please? It's very hard to hear you. Okay, let's see. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I was saying, right, like, I get the whole um, goal of, like, making the world active and all, but just regardless of, like, the social um, benefit of everything and, like, just with being active, like, there's going to be some form of, like, for profit for, like, the sweats, like, um, company in itself, like, the founders and the builders, right? So I'm thinking, like, besides the 5%, like, uh, marketplace, like, incentive, like, what are their, like, um, funding? Like or uh, like in terms of like like um profit like um like um uh, what am I saying now like um the income revenue for like the the sweat foundation or like the sweat team yeah makes sense um great question thank you um so given the fact that we were able to build a very sustainable and profitable web two business using sweat coin that is centralized inflationary and has a very limited utility only been used in our existing app can you imagine what we can actually accomplish when we have decentralized deflationary and an open economy of movement you know this is just a sort of a statement we are unlocking a lot of shackles and limitations that were imposed on us by the fact that we couldn't be on blockchain but Specifically, what it means is we can do everything we do in Web2 as revenue streams. We're earning a lot of money through partnerships. There are a lot of Web3 projects, metaverses, NFT collections, uh, new token launches that are willing to pay top dollar 
to get access to you guys as a community. And the best way for them would be to actually work with us and do it through Sweat Wallet because, you know, this is, this is where millions and millions of users and, uh, of Web3 are going to uh, hang out. So huge revenue stream. The other one that we are already monetizing and in a very intelligent way in our existing app is Daily Bonus. You probably use it. I don't know if you've ever watched an ad that we're unlocking with the more you walk, the you know, the you have an opportunity to watch another ad. Advertising. And a lot of Web3 projects are struggling to advertise in relevant places. So we're going to be a fantastic uh, place for them to, uh, to, to let you know what is the next cool thing that is uh, uh, coming up. So advertising, number two. Number three, and we've already alluded to it earlier, is we're already making quite a lot of money on sort of direct to consumer subscriptions. There is nothing that stops us from, um, you know, from, from, from being able to monetize this, uh, this channel as well. However, it doesn't end there. There are a lot more interesting things that going into crypto allows us to do. Dex is generating keys, they will go into foundation and DAO. Uh, NFT collections that we're going to have are going to be generating quite considerable revenues for DAO. The creation of future movement uh, validators uh, is going to require a significant amount of sweat to be staked as a security. That is going to create an additional demand. And one of my absolutely favorites is we're sitting on terabytes of data that we never did share with anyone. We do not share and we never will as a centralized business. However, when we become DAO, we can actually transfer this information to DAO as ownership and we can allow you to flick the switch and enable access to this information for insurers, for healthcare providers, for governments, so that they can understand what's happening with, the, uh, with physical activity and health of their populations. And that is going to cost quite a lot of money. And you going to take that money with a fee going to DAO. Hopefully that's sufficient. Thank you, Oleg. I'm very conscious of time and it's with huge apologies that I say that we'll just take this last question from Newt and then we'll, we'll have to close off the AMA for today. Uh, but I don't want to do so before uh, a thank you firstly to all of you for taking the time to listen to us. I hope you found it informative. Um, and also to announce that by way of a thank you for joining us on this uh, this very first AMA that we've run, uh, we are inviting you or we have some sweat coins to give away. So we will be airdropping 20,000 sweat coins to the community. The mechanic is as follows. The first 150 users to submit Google Forms that are going to be posted in the AMA chat shortly uh, with your details in will each receive 100 sweat coins by way of a thank you for joining us on this AMA. And of those 150 users, five will get randomly selected to win 1,000 sweat coins. So look out for the link. And, uh, and, and do submit your details uh, right away. Sareem will stay on the AMA um, after Oleg and I leave uh, in order to dis disperse those users. Um, and uh, just to thank you really for your, for your time in joining us. Um, and there'll be more of that to come. And obviously in future AMAs, we'll, we'll build in more time to make sure that we get more of you up on stage. Um, but uh, whilst that link's being posted, um, Newt, did you have a question that you wanted to ask Oleg? Sorry, just quickly filling out the form. <laughs> uh, g'day, guys. Um, it's all right, I got in. I got in. <laughs> g'day, guys. I've been with Sweat for a few years now. Huge congratulations on making it this far. Um, so you guys have some very exciting partners signed on, and well done for that. I'm wondering if the partners will be granted access to Sweat tokens at a discount in the future, or are you making them run like everyone else and they're on board primarily because they want to do good for society? Yeah, no, um, I don't think we ever discussed with any of the partners um, a some sort of preferential rates uh, when it comes to uh, sweat. The the biggest reason why uh, partners want to work with us 
is because we have uh, kind of an amazing community and a lot of users that are open and keen to um, kind of learn about uh, uh, about other projects. And if this partner is, you know, about data, let's wait when we have that as uh, uh, as a DAO. Um, yeah, this is this is not about um, kind of preferential rates for uh, for tokens. Thank you, Oleg. And, uh, and again, thank you to everybody that's joined us. I hope you found the Google Form link and are submitting your details. Uh, and hopefully we can reward and thank many of you for being here with us today. Uh, and obviously do stay tuned for future AMAs. We'll be talking to different members within the team. We'll be deep diving on different elements of our offering uh, going forward. And um, we'll obviously, you'll be the first to hear within the community. Oleg, um, I hate to put you on the spot. Any final thoughts that you want to leave the community with today before we sign off? Uh, just massive thanks for being here, for spending an hour with us. Um, you know, spread the word. Let us know what else we can do for you. Um, you know, what information you need from us. And do come back for subsequent uh, uh, AMAs. We're going to be giving more and more concrete stuff as we're progressing towards uh, TGE. And uh, yeah, let's make the world more physically um, active, health and wealth. Absolutely that. Thank you so much.